Welcome back, everyone, to Thoughts. I'm Joe Van, and pigs. That is the topic of today. Before I get into it, let me just play a clip that inspired me wanting to make a topic about it. <laughs> uh, people should not eat pigs. It's completely fucked up. Pigs are practically sentient creatures. They are. There was a study in 2019 that they are the only animals more intelligent than pigs are elephants, chimps, and dolphins. They're literally the fourth most intelligent animal other than human beings. They're far more intelligent than cats and dogs, which we find abhorrent in this country to eat. Mm. And we uh, harvest them on an industrial scale. Um, it's really fucked up. And I love pigs. And uh, you shouldn't eat them. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so now, before getting into the entire voiceover, I want to give you guys an anecdote. Uh, it's not the funnest or anything, but it's still worth mentioning. Back when I was 22, I volunteered under my uncle to be security for the Burlington Rib Fest. When my shift was coming to an end, I was exiting the fair, and there were vegan protesters right outside, and they were saying that they would give $5 to anyone who watches a VR documentary about pigs. And so I said, sure, why not? It's easy five bucks. So they give me the VR, I put it on, I put on the, uh, the headphones and it was a very short documentary and the documentary was about the treatment and slaughtering of industrial farm animals and specifically pigs. So I was 22 years old when I watched that. I had seen slaughter videos of animals and I've even seen murder videos of humans on the internet before but to experience it in VR, where it is as if you were actually there watching the pig get slaughtered, several pigs, and just watching the mistreatment of them too as babies growing up in, in metal graded fencing, it stuck with me. And not only that, but when I was done my experience, a literal kid who couldn't have been any more than 11 or 12 years old went after me, having no idea what he was going through. So. To those protesters, shame on you. You should have some kind of understanding that maybe wait until a person is 14 or 15 to allow them to see slaughter videos. But then again, I'd, I'd, no, 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 that's my stance. Anyway, now let us get into an in-depth look at pigs. Enjoy. Ninu chudadam chada bagundi, everyone. So, what the heck are pigs, I hear you ask? A pig is like a person complicated. They aren't the only complicated non-humans around, like say every other primate on the planet, and more, but for today's video we'll break down pigs, specifically farm pigs, and get a better understanding of their history on earth with us humans and the role they have yet to play in the future in relationship to us. So a pig is any of the animals in the genus Sus. Nani? Within the even-toed ungulate family Suidae, pigs include domestic pigs, Sus domesticus, and their ancestor, the common Eurasian wild boar, Sus scrofa, along with other species. Pigs, like all Suedes, are native to the Eurasian and African continents, ranging from Europe to the Pacific Islands. Pigs are highly social and intelligent animals, with around 1 billion individuals alive at any time. This makes the domestic pig among the most populous large mammal in the world. Pigs, like humans, are omnivores and can consume a wide range of food. They are also biologically similar to us and thus frequently used for human medical research. But before going on about their physique, let's tackle the word pig and try to find out where it originated. It probably comes from the Old English beak, found in compounds, but the ultimate origin is unknown. Originally, young pig, the word for adults was swine, apparently related to German beak, or Dutch big, but the phenomenology is difficult. Another Old English word for pig was fur, related to fur, which means furrow. Sources also exist of Latin purcus giving name for the food pork. These plethora of potential name origins, quote, 
reflects a widespread tendency to name animals from typical attributes or activities. From Roger Lass. Synonyms grunter and oinker are from sailors and fishermen's euphemistic avoidance of uttering the word pig at sea, a superstition perhaps based on the fate of Gardarine swine who drowned. Ultimately, the names we have for pigs or whatever name stands the test of time. Anything not popular or written down in history simply doesn't make the cut. Now, about their bodies. Not the prettiest body type in the world by most humans' accounts, a typical pig has a large head with a long snout that is strengthened by a special prenasal bone and by a disc of cartilage at the tip. The snout is used to dig into the soil to find food and is in itself a very acute sense organ. Each foot has four hooved toes, with the two larger central toes bearing most of the weight and the outer two also being used in soft ground. Adult pigs have a total of 44 teeth. The rear teeth are adapted for crushing. In the male, the canine teeth form tusks, which can grow continuously and are sharpened constantly by being ground against each other. Now, these specific physical mutations didn't adapt out of nowhere. Their body type came about through natural selection to fill a specific niche in their environment. The ancestor of the domestic pig is the wild boar, which is one of the most numerous and widespread large mammals, as mentioned before. Its many subspecies are native to all but the harshest climates of continental Eurasia, including its islands, and Africa as well, from Ireland and India to Japan and north of Siberia. Long isolated from other pigs on the many islands of Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines, pigs have evolved into many different species, including wild boar, bearded pig, and the warty pigs. Humans have introduced pigs to Australia, North and South America, and numerous islands, either accidentally as escaped domestic pigs which have gone feral, or as wild boar to hunt. Now it's time to talk about that, the elephant, or excuse me, pig in the room, our relationship with them throughout history. Most pigs today are domesticated pigs raised for meat, known as pork. Miniature breeds are commonly kept as pets today. Because of their foraging abilities and excellent sense of smell, people in many European countries use them to find truffles. Apart from meat, pig skin is turned into leather, and their hairs are used to make brushes. The relatively short, stiff, coarse pig hairs are called bristles, and were once so commonly used in paint brushes that in 1946 the Australian government launched Operation Pig Bristle. In May 1946, in response to a shortage of pig bristles for paint brushes to paint houses in the post-World War II construction boom, the Royal Australian Air Force, or RAAF, flew in 28 short tons of pig bristles from China their only commercially available source at the time. Human skin is very similar to pig skin, therefore many preclinical studies employ pig skin. In addition to providing use in biomedical research and for drug testing, genetic advances in human healthcare have provided a pathway for domestic pigs to become xenotransplantational candidates for humans. This intimacy brings up the next topic, how pigs found their way into our cultures. Pigs have been important in culture across the world since Neolithic times. They appear in art, literature, and religion. In Asia, the wild boar is one of the 12 animal images comprising the Chinese zodiac, while in Europe, the boar represents a standard charge in heraldry. In Islam and Judaism, pigs and those who handle them are viewed negatively, and the consumption of pork is forbidden. Alhamdulillah. Pigs are alluded to in animal epithets in Proverbs. But now it's time to stop praising them and take a hard look at the consequences these kinds of relationships can have on the planet. Pigs aren't directly causing planetary harm like our species is, but they are indirectly doing so. Domestic pigs that have escaped from urban areas or were allowed to forage in the wild and in some cases wild boars which were introduced as prey for hunting have given rise to large populations of feral pigs. In North and South America, Australia, New Zealand, Hawaii, and other areas where pigs are not native. Accidental or deliberate releases of pigs into countries or environments which they are alien to have caused extensive environmental damage. 
Their omnivorous diet, aggressive behavior, and their feeding method of rooting into the ground all combine to severely alter ecosystems unused to pigs. Pigs will even eat small animals and destroy nests of grounding birds. The Invasive Species Specialist Group lists feral pigs on the list of the world's 100 worst invasive species. Because of biological similarities, pigs can harbor a range of parasites and diseases that can be transmitted to humans. Examples of such zoonoses include trichinosis, tania solium, cystichercosis, and brucellosis. Pigs also host large concentrations of parasitic ascarid worms in their digestive tracts. Some strains of influenza are endemic in pigs, the most significant one of which, H1N1, H1N2, and H3N2, the former of which has caused several outbreaks among humans, including the Spanish flu, 1977 Russian flu pandemic, and the 2009 swine flu pandemic. Pigs also can acquire human influenza. It makes you wonder, what else might pigs acquire? Intelligence, perhaps? Pigs are believed to be one of the most intelligent animals, following chimps, dolphins, and elephants. We might think our dogs are the smartest animals when they can roll over and shake on command, but they surpass even man's best friend. Their intelligence was first discovered in experiments in the 1990s. Pigs were taught several tasks, including using a cursor on a computer screen. They learned these tasks as quickly as chimps. They could move a cursor on a screen with their snouts, as well as use the cursor to distinguish between scribbles they knew and those they were seeing for the first time. While they don't come from the same ancestor that made all primates, they seem to harbor as much of a potential at reaching self-awareness as our closest genetic cousins. So, when we all look at the traits that make pigs unique, we see a traditional farm animal. But when we look at the traits pigs share with us humans, it is impossible for us to hold that blindfold over our eyes that these guys are nothing more than mere food fodder. Whether you always understood the intelligence of pigs, or just learned today, what one could walk away with after hearing this is the knowledge that, should we the nations of humanity ever begin handing out intelligence-related sovereignty to non-human animals, pigs ought to be one of the first five species. They evolved pretty separated from us, and that can be seen in their shape, but their minds and attitudes are right up our alley. So next time when you think of choosing pork, beef, or poultry, ah, like how I'm about to tell you to consider your diet, philosophy is one thing, but practice is another. I have the philosophy of a vegan, but don't act on it. I act on what's cheap and convenient. Life is hard enough for me, but as the growing popularity for meat alternatives grow in our Western world, so will the convenience to choose not pig for dinner. Maybe then the pigs of this world will have a chance to make their way into our homes as pets instead of into our bellies. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. As always, thank you guys so much for being here. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen, as always, make sure to do your own research. That's the one thing that I cannot stress enough, is that me doing a deep dive on a topic is not the same as you doing one, and it's not the same as someone who spends years going over that topic. So, with that said, I appreciate the time you gave me to be here. I love you all to no end. And I ask that you remember to keep on thinking. Bye for now.